Every time God takes you to another level, there is a test coming. These are tests which anticipate the next problem that you will have. God sees things happening from afar. Given that your child is going to have the baccalaureate, I see the group of wizards there who are planning something against you. Look, look their strength. He says, I won't allow you. And at this very moment, God is coming to visit you. He comes to visit you. He is really coming to visit you to take you up to a superior level because he said, I will not allow a test to be beyond. Your strength, that is to say, to completely prevent the test from happening, or if the ordeal end up reaching you, are ready for it. Either he avoids it altogether. You see adversity and then he pushes you aside. He makes it so you don't even have to confront it because he can't allow that because he is your God and he is above everything. If you're not ready, he'll take you and put you in Egypt, Herod, and you won't live in the same neighborhood. But if adversity has come towards you, you have seen it. They are coming to attack you. There is a problem with authority is that just before, God was equipping you to raise you up. This is something you shouldn't miss. So whatever the adversity, God sets you above in the name of Jesus. So test number eight, it occurs in a person's life. When God is going to take them to a higher level, you're going to rise, you're going to see certain types of difficulties that arise. When you see them coming, you have to know that you are going to be given a higher rank. Because you will go to another level, you need to have the right attitude. It's just a matter of time before you move to another level. Be lifted up in the name of Jesus. So to understand this test, which is the school we must see when Israel experienced this, we must read number chapter 12, verse 1. Mary and Aaron spoke against Moses concerning the Ethiopian wife he had taken. Because he had taken an Ethiopian wife. He said, Is it only through Moses that the Lord speaks? Is it not also through us that he speaks? The Lord heard him. Now Moses was a more patient man than any man on the face of the earth. Verse 4, Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Go, you three, to the tent of meeting, and all three of them went. The Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and jumped to the door of the tent. He called to Aaron and Mary, and they both came forward and said, Hear my words when there be among you one prophet, it is in a vision, that I, the Lord, will reveal myself to him, and it is in a sense that I will speak to him. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful throughout my house. I speak to him mouth to mouth. I reveal myself to him without enigma. He sees a representation of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? The anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. The night receded from the waiting, and behold, Mary was stricken with leprosy as white as snow. Aaron turned to Mary, and behold, she had leprosy. Then Aaron said to Moses, Please, my Lord, do not make us bear the penalty of the sin which we have committed foolishly and of which we are guilty. May she not be like a stillborn child whose flesh is half consumed when it comes out of its mother's womb. Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, God, I pray you, heal her. And the Lord say to Moses, If her father had spat in her face, would she not be an object of shame for seven days? Locked her up outside the camp for seven days, after which she would be received there. Mary was locked up outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not leave until Mary returned. After that, the people left Hatzeroth and camped in Paran Desert. Amen to the word of God. Moses, who was the leader of the people, behaved in a way that did not please number two. Number two was Miriam, her big sister, and then her big brother. When God chose Moses, God said, you go back to Egypt, and God gave him as number two, the one who was to carry the word of the Lord and Miriam, too. And God granted both Aaron and Miriam a prophetic anointing. Had the anointing of God, they were prophets. They themselves say that God speaks to them, too. Miriam is a lady who prophetically composed a great antique when they crossed the Red Sea. She is a prophetess blessed by God. And then something will happen. Moses' attitude will not please them. Miriam and Aaron will criticize Moses. It must be said that it is true that God speaks to him, but he is not the only one. He must also listen to us. We too have revelations, and they spoke against Moses. The Bible says God heard. You know, there are times you criticize an authority, and then God doesn't hear. If God has not heard, you are good. But the day God heard it is not good. The Bible says God heard consequence. They were stricken with leprosy. They shouldn't have spoken like that. 
It was on this day, brothers and sisters, that Aaron and Miriam lost their spiritual position. And that God took Joshua, that's what happened. That is to say that the elevation they were supposed to experience had just been lost because of one thing. They did not have the same way of seeing as Moses. Maybe they said God said we are not going to marry foreigners. Why did he marry an Ethiopian? Ethiopians were not part of the people forbidden to marriage in Israel. The people banned from marriage, we will hear about them later, in fact. It was seven people who lived in Canaan, but in any case, I don't know why they didn't like this story. Well, now there are lots of debates about who Ethiopia really was. Is it Sephora? Is it not Sephora? Was it another woman? There are some who say it is. Another woman, others say that in fact Sephora, because Sephora is Jethro's daughter, and Jethro was Midianite. So we cannot say that she is Ethiopian. There you go, there are some who say no, what is Sephora? Well, in short, there are plenty of things, it doesn't matter. What is certain is that the woman in question, Sephora or not Sephora, she is Ethiopian. Okay, so maybe Mary and Aaron weren't happy with Sephora, but we don't know who cares. What is sure, they criticized Moses and what happened, leprosy struck them. Leprosy is a disease that indicates that you have missed an elevation cycle. Because when you succeed in this step, you move to another level. How does the ordeal manifest itself? What is desert test number eight? It is a misunderstanding, a lack of agreement between one of your leaders and you. Test number eight is that there's something going on not with your friends. When it's your friends, it's Dabara, but with your boss, your director, your department head, your husband, your dad, your superior. At a period there's going to be a conflict, it could happen. He makes decisions that don't suit you. He's asking you to do something you don't enjoy. There is something happening. It can be your pastor. Your pastor is your leader. You don't like the way he preaches. You don't like the decision he made. Listen, brothers, it will happen if we ask who is happy with the head of state. Now, when we are not happy, what can we do? What can we not do? We have not forbidden. Not to be happy. There are attitudes that you should not have. Alleluia. Once you have them, it leads to a series of problems. The spiritual leprosy, the Bible says, beware of leprosy. You are to be very careful about leprosy. Say with me, I'm careful. Beware, brother. We will see here that many people who are blocked, there is a form of leprosy. Who is on your life? But Jesus will heal you. You'll say the pastor is good myself, myself. I have been true that. Test number eight, there bothered me too much. I.e., I had leprosy for a long time. I was cured after the leprosy happens again, and I was cured again. There are people who don't know that your file is not signed because of leprosy. Some people are unable to give birth due to leprosy. When it happens, it's not inevitable. God will heal you. You just need to be aware of what triggers it. Once you are aware, you avoid it because it is a waste of time on the path to your elevation. When spiritual leprosy hits you, you are thrown out. The Bible says the people waited until Miriam was healed of leprosy before continuing. When the leprosy arrives, it prevents you from moving forward. You're stuck like that until it goes away. So if you only do one leprosy after one leprosy after another, be healed in Jesus' name. Let us observe Deuteronomy 24, verses 8. Beware of the plague of leprosy, that you may observe and do all that. The priests shall teach you, the Levites, you shall be careful to do according to the orders which I gave them. Remember what the Lord your God did to Mary on the way when you came out. Of Egypt, remember God lift you up, God lift you up. You need to know if you have given your life to Jesus, you have a blessing of elevation. Look, I haven't explained leprosy yet, so you shouldn't even imagine leprosy. It's not inevitable, life goes on. Amen. You are not disqualified, but at least we must discern that it is something that happens too often. Too often. When God is about to elevate you, there are people who will approach you to criticize the leader. Yes, Satan's messengers, bad connections. When God is going to raise you up, there is one of your friends who approaches, and then you and her sit down to criticize your husband. Come let talk, and then you believe that it is just a joke. Let me explain to you. Don't criticize your husband. Women, you are specialists in this matter. They criticize him so bad. Because it's a form of self-deprecation for a woman, my husband, oh my God, then her friends soothe her. Really, if it is a good friend, she will say, oh men, you must let go, you must forgive. But it can create small problems for you, it will. Just put you a little behind, a delay, but it's easily adjustable. But at least you have to be aware of it. Otherwise, you can go back in there. 
and then miss an elevation cycle, which means that right after that, you can have some problems that will be above you. And you're going to look at the problem. My God, you told me that you will not allow. But for a time, the problem tires you and you have to start the other cycle again. When the grace again arrives there, you say, no, I missed the elevator. Take the other elevator, then you go above it. And then you fix it quickly. You need to get over it very quickly. That's it. In this situation, you have to go up quickly. Don't miss the elevator. God is sending you the lift. Say with me, in the name of Jesus, I will not miss the elevator of my elevation. Lord Jesus, thank you for the lift that you give me to go above, to go above, to go above the challenges. Above the problems, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I dominate. Life of Christ is in me, my Father, my God. Lifts me above every situation. Thank you, Lord, for this grace. And for this gift of elevation that you have given me, blessed be your name. I acclaim your name in the name of Jesus. And say with me, I am healed of all leprosy in the name. Of Jesus, I am healed of every form of leprosy in the name of Jesus. Amen.